you know what? We're going to go ahead and start a minute early because we're going to start out of order. And my bet is there aren't going to be too many people who are going to miss or you know what we're going to start with. So without further ado, we're going to call the delayed February meeting to order at 7. There you go. And we are going to start with Roman numeral 3 on our agenda. We're going to discuss the modifications to the plan for Laurelwood Lots. How are you? Very good. Um, at the last meeting, you approved three lots, one of them being lot 2, which had 50 feet of frontage. Yes. Which on this plan and your plan, would have been a blue line. What we're proposing is to shift it over to Frank Park. Reason being, there's a large um, retaining wall starting in the middle of Block 2 and going down towards Pierce Parish Road. And when these lots have a common driveway, what I do is to move the line over so we have a common driveway on that um, angled portion of the a new lot line. There's a, a concrete bound here, right. and that, 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 that stone, our retaining wall goes from here down. Yep. So, that, this gives me 44 feet from here to here to be a common driveway for these two lots. Right. Which would be ample. This, this plan is colored up. The uh, yellow line is what I'm proposing, and the blue one is what we originally approved in the center. Okay. That's, that's the only change. Does anybody have any questions? Um, you're essentially creating slightly more square footage for lot two, yeah. and slightly less on the plus this lot three. Three. They both, yeah, three. They both far exceed the amount required by the bylaw. Yes. Um, right. And your frontage on lot three continues to be it's feet. over 100 feet. So. It was a 50 list on the other side. It was 50, so now it's 50 plus. I think we have it's, uh, There's a 28.36 call on the left hand side and a 44.96 on the right. That's why it's high. That threw that that me too. Yeah, I can see yeah. 28, 72. So yeah. Yep. Anybody down here? George, any questions? questions? I see it as a substantial change to it. Yeah. Do you see it that clearly that you'd like to give us a motion? Um, we, there, we really, there's no, there's no finding, there's no decision. Have we? Well, I think, well, I think, I think we, I think we would too. Have we filed? Finding have we filed any uh, substantial no, decision yet? They were waiting for that. I have the decision. Jack was yet. Oh. Do you see Rory? Which we'll file tomorrow. I would, move, I would move to incorporate the revised plan dated. November 18th, 2019, for their, um, the revision date. Actually, sorry, before we make that motion, does anyone here have anything to add on this? This is a, a change to last month's Laurelwood application. Oh, excuse me. Yes. I, 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 we couldn't really hear what was said just now. Of course. So it would, it would be helpful if of course, last month we heard an application, I'm sorry, it was in December we heard an application for a subdivision of some lots on Laurelwood Drive, and there is a minor change to the lot line along parcel 2A of what was approved then. To is it an expansion? Or? It, is, it is an expansion of that lot 2A because they're taking the land from the lot 3 okay. that was on the same plan. Okay. If this plan had been before us with the application, it would have not made any difference in our decision. This is simply because of something they found on the ground with a concrete retaining um, wall, retaining wall. Retaining retaining wall <laughs> that rather than have to destroy that retaining wall, they want to slide the lot line so they can put a headroom for the common driveway without uh, disrupting the wall that's existed there for some time on the way. One lot's getting a few square feet bigger, and the other one that was part of the application as well, a few smaller, they all still meet the requirements. So I would move to incorporate the plan presented this evening, dated November 18, 2019, into the decision of our December meeting. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. This is a decision after all. I don't know if you want to take it now. If you want to email to you tomorrow, but I think this has to be signed from the middle of March. It's been 90 days from December 19th. Sure. And that and that references the the new plan. Yes. Yep. And okay, fantastic. I think, I, you, I think you give it to me. Yeah, we can take that now and then. Take care. I got more copies. Of the no, I'll take care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, I'd like to do one more out of order. 755 First Parish Road. Just because Bob has some input on this, um, that's a bit more involved. He needs to make it to our planning board. Do you want to do um, Gannett Road request for continuance? Oh, sure. Let's do that. The second application, which is the application of Brian O'Neill Sr. Esquire of 35 Gannett Road, Situate Mass, requesting a special permit slash finding pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 6, and or Section uh, 810.3 of Citrus Zoning Bylaw to raise and reconstruct the pre-existing non-conforming accessory structure, uh, the garage. Uh, it is property located at 35 Gannett Road. The applicant has requested a continuance to our next month's hearing. Move to continue. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There we go. With that, we're going to move to our third application, that of Maud Mulesey of 755 First Parish Road, requesting a set special permit finding pursuant to 810.2 of the Citroen Zoning Bylaw and or MGL Chapter 48, Section 6, to allow the extension of an existing structure on a pre-existing non-conforming lot, increasing the gross floor area by more than 20%. The property in question being located at 755 First Parish Road. Is the applicant yeah. here? Hi there. Yes, please, if you wouldn't mind coming up here. I apologize for the awkwardness of how close the table is to ours. What about Mr. He's right here. Yes. So. This in this end of this year, we moved from a barn to a garage, so we did the roof, we did the pre-framing and everything. And now we would like to change that barn into a small, it's only 540 square feet, uh, little living space for him. He needs one little bedroom and a uh, kitchenette and a bathroom. So, as this building is already there, it would be an accessory dwelling. And we're just asking because the uh, the lot is slightly smaller than the zone one is. It's non-conforming because it was the house was built before 1950, and uh, it's still a huge lot. It's 3,000 3, square feet. Yes. <laughs> the first house, the house is at the beginning, and this building is halfway through. It it conforms to all the setbacks and the. Uh, 540 square feet is less than the 750 square feet uh, that is the max for an accessory dwelling. Right. And so, um, Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, she is here first because of the non conforming characteristics of the lot. Correct. And then, if we approved the zoning board question, then she would need to go to the planning board for the accessory dwelling permit. Right. Could, you know, whatever order the applicant chooses to do that, right. that, that, that <coughs> both of those things need to be done. Yes. Yeah. 
So uh, we already planned that with the planning board. That's in a few weeks. Right. So yeah. You, yes. So we would first try. We try to do everything by the rules and what's. Uh, of course. <laughs> and so, um, Bob. It looks like the planning board might have shown us their card on what they think about this. What, what's going on? Well, I wouldn't say that necessarily. Um, we're go before the board. It's a fairly straightforward application. Uh, it certainly meets all the criteria of an accessory dwelling. And so I can't imagine that the board would have serious reservations about writing the permit. Yet, can you tell us a little bit about the letter you received? Uh, well, I received a letter not from the planning board, but from an attorney representing the butter, as I understand it. Which is the above caption. Is that a butter? Yeah, I don't have are you are you referencing the, the it says something about Ms. O'Connor? Uh, I'm Ms. referencing the letter that I have updated February twenty fourth. So is that second letter. There's two letters, one from uh, the O'Connors and one from their lawyer, which only came a few days ago. Okay. And that's the one I'm looking at. Oh, okay. And, and, and I would actually like to comment. Just comment. And we'll get back to you, but Bob, just for one second. What, and I, I apologize if I'm catching up, what led you to write the memorandum that's in the file to the town planner? That was the letter from the O'Connors, which has been in hand for a few weeks now. And did, it, and did the town planner ask you for some comment on no, the O'Connor? No, I did You just felt it was a good I idea. strictly did that sure. as, as my prerogative of inputting to their process. Right, they're not disagreeing at all, just trying to understand yeah. and get, and get so it out that, there. that is what happened. Wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> would you like more? Or would you like to keep well, me here? Oh. Yes. I mean, I, 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 I think the, you know, the points I made, I certainly feel are valid that the building itself meets all the setback requirements. The concept of putting an accessory dwelling in that building meets all the requirements associated with an accessory dwelling. Uh, I basically could not see a reason not to uh, not to approve it and express that to the planning board. Yes. Okay. And you said you had something to add in response to the letters. Yeah. So I read the letter. Only got it this morning. But um, well, first of all, the letter references some old case laws, 1994. Uh, but this is the zoning. Board and it goes by the zoning bylaws of Citroën. So, um, so they are saying it's uh, it's not conforming to the area, but that's not correct. It's less than 750 square <coughs> so it does conform. I would agree. Yeah. And the second thing that they are bringing out, which he calls the Rockwood test, which is not part of the zoning bylaws, um, says that in my building changing this second structure into a, a little house would be detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, he also says that they are all single family homes on large private lots. So that is not correct. If you drive through the West End, you see very many four or five buildings and the O'Connors themselves have an accessory dwelling of the same dimensions. In fact, it was them that showed it to me and suggested. So, then it, it's talking about two independent single-family residences. No, it's still a single-family lot with a accessory dwelling. They're not two separate. Uh, it says it's backs my house backs up the forest of town-owned land. This has nothing to do with it. We are not building on the town-owned land. It says that the backyard. At one point, it says it's less than 20 feet from the from the neighbors. Another point, it says it's just beyond their stone wall, which is not true, it's less than 20 feet, uh, and it uh, conforms to the setbacks. And it says that it would overlook their backyard and their back door. Okay. Uh, it also says that a new dwelling immediately on the other side of their stone wall. It is not immediately, as you can see. So they have enjoyed quiet area there, Okay, uh, I have lived there seven years. Uh, my opinion is we're all neighbors. Nobody owns 
10 acres. So we're all putting up with each other's noise and whatever. Um, so we have not had any noise complaints from them. And I do not believe that my accessory dwelling would change the character of the cherished neighborhood of the West End or anybody's property values. And then just on what we have you here, the O'Connors are located where? Further to the, the west or? North or south? North or south. Um, here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So as you can see, these are the other neighbors that are yes. looking directly my back door, yes. which I never complained about. Sure. Thank you. All right. And there else? is an existing fence between our area, and um, I feel that I bought the whole property, which means I am allowed to sit in front of my garage, behind my garage, next to my garage, <laughs> <laughs> with my family. You get some crazy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and they did not buy that second half, so for them to say that they want free uh, view and they don't want anybody looking in from my second half into their backyard, it, it doesn't make sense to me. They can extend the fence, which we've, I've already discussed with them before. If I may just say, relax. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, but we are here, we are here to administer the bylaws of the town, yeah. but also to recognize property rights of both applicants before us and their neighbors and Understood. take it all into consideration. You've done a Understood. very good job of positioning um, your case. And, okay. Um, Sorry, the whole thing took no, me rather by surprise we because understand. we, we do they were aware of this for a very long time and never had any... <coughs> any no, issues. to, to uh, be clear, you're not expanding the size of your house. No. You're not expanding the size of the bar. No. It will. You're I'm not, adding I mean, a little are. tiny storage area, so, but that's so not living 16 by 16.5 by 10 <coughs> added to the board, right? Is that going? <coughs> it's a storage. <coughs> Pardon me, is that going to be heated? No, it's a storage. Correct. It's, it's not service. living. You're right, yeah. A living area, well, there's no living area. No. So, yeah. so, so is that not is that only going to be accessible from the outside, or is it going to be accessible from the inside as well? From the outside. Only from the outside. Yeah, it's okay. for me to put, I, I don't have a garage, and I don't have a good uh, basement, so it's just to put so some to stuff. Be on, to be honest, the, the addition isn't really part of your application, because no. you don't need relief for that. No. Yeah. Yeah. To make it, yeah, yeah. it wasn't an extension of the building, that it was yeah. in fact a story <laughs> area that's only accessible from the outside. And, there you're, you not, and you're not adding any bedrooms? Yeah. Well, well other than the one bedroom. that's going in the barn. Then today there are three bedrooms. Tomorrow there will be three bedrooms. Correct. No, wait, so today there's two bedrooms. They're going to lose one of the houses. The, the house has a three bedroom septic system. Correct. And tomorrow it's going to have a three bedroom septic system. You're yeah. so there giving are, up a bedroom in the home. Exactly. Well, I didn't actually, realize that. So, so now, and I was very straightforward about this in my application that it was never a bedroom. And anyone who's been there can see it's an office with huge bookshelves and it has a pull down uh, stairs to the attic so you can't even put a bed in it. So, I've already been talking to the Board of Health, that's a separate thing. So, we have to, uh, uh, they, they want me to do something with the doors. And I've already agreed to that, right. to do that. Sure. So that we will do that. It's also totally the buck board. So I, was, I was confused by the existing on the plan. Right. So, so they're not, yeah. Can they be here? Yeah. Are we, we good? You have any We're good. Tom? No. All right. With that, okay. is anyone here from the, uh, we need you for a few more minutes, okay. actually. Sorry. Anyone here from the audience? Yes, sir. Just your name and address or or who you might be speaking on behalf of yeah. their address for the record. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> for the record, my name is Donald Nagel. I represent the advisors, Nancy and Michael O'Connor at 759 First Paris Road. And um, this application, the lot that is the subject of the application, is non-conforming solely because it's an undersized lot. It's 32,000 square feet, and joining there is 40,000. So section eight, um, 810-2A says if there's a non, if it's a non-conforming lot solely for the reason of an undersized lot, then it limits any accessory dwelling to 20% of the existing dwelling. I'm not. Uh, 
they, I don't think that's, that doesn't have to do with A10.2. A102A says that if the sole reason that it's not conforming, uh, that, uh, that the limit of the accessible dwelling can be no more than 20% of the existing dwelling. So I'll give you a chance to look at it. I think yeah. what that says is that the building commissioner cannot, on his own, issue a permit. Right. So if you go to the next page, the paragraph right above 810.3, in all other instances of alteration, reconstruction, extension of structural change to single or two family dwellings, the applicant may petition the Board of Appeals for a finding on the 948 section 6. Right. In all other instances, other than the situation described in A2A and A2B. A2A talks about if the sole reason for the uh, non-conformance is a undersized lot, then the limit to the accessory dwelling so, sorry, you're, is 20%. You're skipping the first sentence of the section, which says the building commissioner may. So the building commissioner can do something if A or B is correct, in all other instances, the building commissioner may not. The applicant would have to come to the Board of the Appeals. That's Nothing right. in 810 says something cannot happen absolutely. It says the building commissioner cannot approve anything without over coming 20%. To us, without coming to us first. Right. But it says in all other instances, you can get a Section 6 funding before the GDF. Right? This would be one of those instances. That's right. And this that's is another where instance. Where and so what I'm saying is, a Section 6 finding is not appropriate here. And what because is, it's why not, not an other instance. The so instance. I think that's where you're losing us. Yeah, okay. We, we feel that this is an other instance, and to be honest, every month we grant several, and hear several applications in a very similar instance such right. as this. Well, I mean, I can't speak to other no, situations. So let's speak to this but one. But I can say, and I think everybody can agree, that the sole reason of nonconformity here is because the lot is undersized. Agreed. Correct? Yes. And section A, paragraph A, says if the sole reason of nonconformity is an undersized lot, and there's a limit to the accessory dwelling. There's a limit if the building commissioner on his or her own is going to grant the permit. Then there is a limit. If they exceed that limit, the building commissioner on his or her own is not able to grant the permit. That doesn't mean that if they're going over that limit, the applicant cannot come to us and request further relief. Actually, the section says that they absolutely can and that is the purpose of in all other instances. With all respect, it says that in other, in all other instances, in, right? Well, other with, than what? With, other than the instances laid out in paragraph A and paragraph B. With all the, and in this with all case, respect. it fits paragraph A. With, so what I'm suggesting is you don't even get to a section six finding. You, may, I, may, I, may I clarify? The, way, the reason this bylaw was put into place is because in all instances, the building inspector, the code enforcement officer, had the right to issue a permit. It was added that if it was going to expand over 20%, then this board needed to be considered. It was, in, it was basically because we weren't always going to have the high quality building inspectors we've had. So there was a, a second tier. But this is simply a second tier. In order to support the building inspector, who heretofore, prior to this bylaw, could do it on their own. <coughs> There's, this is intended, has been intended, and has been utilized to allow applicants who want to do something more than 20% of the gross floor to be able to come to this board and get that relief. And you, what you're proposing would be that someone who had a 39,000 square foot lot with a uh, small property house on it, couldn't rebuild. Couldn't this, go from a thousand to twelve hundred. This lot, if this house burned down, the house and the lot became available, you could end up with a four or five thousand square foot house on there by right, as long as it stayed within the setbacks. Your proposal would severely limit ninety percent of the 
um, lots in the town that are that don't need zoning um, from being developed in any way, shape, or form. <coughs> and your reading of Section 810 would very clearly violate the Gale ruling, which is arguably the broadest ruling as to what zoning boards can and cannot deny in terms right. of applications. I, I understand the way you're trying to read 810. I understand that that version of an interpretation of 810 is beneficial to your client's position. It is contrary to the way this board and many boards before it has interpreted 810. I understand what you're saying, and I understand what you're saying about the Gale decision, but the Gale decision isn't based on this particular bylaw. This particular bylaw lays out two situations in paragraph A and paragraph B of 810-2A. Yeah, I, I, we, if I we, may dis, we disagree with If I may finish, I know, take, you, I know you disagree, entire. but just give me a chance to Go explain ahead. my position. Sure thing. So my position is, if your interpretation is correct, then it renders paragraph A and B meaningless. Yeah. And for the lawyers on the board, you, can't, you, you know that you can't do that. You can't render provisions of a bylaw meaningless. And if you're saying that no matter what, you can go straight to a, sec, uh, a section six uh, finding, then you're skipping over paragraph A10 to A and to B. You done? So, you done with that part? I am, but I'd like to make another point. If I well, let me respond to that one first. Okay. I disagree with everything you just said, and I'm one of the lawyers on the board, and I'm one of the lawyers on the board that deals with zoning in my private life as well. You're misinterpreting 810 quite a bit. 810 gives applicants the right to apply for a building permit with a non-conforming lot if they are adding 20, less than 20% to their home. 810 says that if they are adding more to 20 than 20% to their home and they have a non-conforming lot, they can't go right to the building commissioner and, and be done. They have to go to the building commissioner and come to us for relief. So that's what it says and that's how we've interpreted it for, I, I've been on the board for about eight years and that's how long we've interpreted it. We've interpreted it like that for a lot longer than that, and I really think that settles the question as to A2. Yeah, so okay, now you, you have another point in your letter which I, I have a lot less disagreement with. Yeah, okay. Um, I understand and respect your reading of that. I happen to disagree with it. Sure. Uh, and it does render the two paragraphs A and B meaningless. Um, but if That's the board what you're does interpret it that way and goes to a section six finding, under these circumstances where the proposal is to add two separate dwellings on a single lot. I'm sorry, how are they being added? They exist, excuse they exist me, today. If I if I you just said they're being added. Separate separate how are they being added? added? The proposal right. here is two separate residences on a single undersized lot in a rural section of situated in the West End. And that's allowed by bylaw. And that, in my opinion, and I would suggest to the board to consider this, is a substantial detriment to the neighborhood, and this, and this, and particularly to the neighbors where their privacy in the backyard goes away and I think for this particular case and for this particular property, it is a substantial detriment, not only to the immediate neighbors, but also to the entire West End, because it sets a bad precedent for overbuilding in what is, which has always been, a rural West End area of situation. So if this were to be approved, allowing two separate dwellings on an undersized lot in the West End, that is, number one, uh, a substantial, substantially more detrimental 
in the existing nonconformity, which is a, a modest 912 square foot uh, house on an undersized lot. Putting two residents on that same lot is definitely more detrimental than the existing nonconformity. And that's the standard that the board needs to How follow. How would you feel about a 6,000 square foot single re single family residence on that lot? I'm sorry? How would you feel about a 6,000 square foot single family residence on that lot? Well, I mean, it's a non-conforming lot. How would you feel about that? So, that, is, that would be allowed by bylaw, as this is allowed by bylaw. They're both allowed by bylaw. We're, I, I, I really can't. Start, you're going to start. I'm not going to answer hypotheticals here. I'm just putting, putting before the board that this proposal is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconformity. And if you get to that section six finding, the board should rule uh, that it is more substantially detrimental and that this application should be denied in that case. Yes, I've got another question. The applicant mentioned before, do your clients have an accessory dwelling on their lot? No, they don't. How many, how many separate buildings are on their lot? There are two buildings, but the second building is not used as a dwelling. It's a, it's a garage or more than a garage? It's a garage. Okay, with some living space in it as well? Just okay. no kitchen? My kitchen. client's property is not before this board well, right well, now. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so you're, I'm sorry, hang on. We're, you're asking us to consider this Right, I'm not asking you to consider no, my client's well, You're asking us to consider and to feel that what she's about to do to her property is substantially detrimental to the neighborhood, specifically to your client's property. That's what was alleged in your letter. That's correct. I'm trying to understand the characteristics of your client's property. Now, I, there's not there's not two dwellings on that property. So there, but there is a garage with living space that is detached from the house. Is there's that a garage that's used as an office. Okay, that's, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying, that doesn't mean yes or no, I was just trying to understand yeah, I, your client's property. Yeah, I need to really say I'm, so, I'm sorry, just one second. So there, there's one other detached building on your client's lot as, 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 as a office. garage with some office. And, it was and, a garage that was converted into a space for uh, doing office work for home I, office. I, I do, it's, it doesn't bother me. Not, not, as not a, absolutely, I didn't right. say otherwise, not a problem with the garage. I think their garage is great. Their, and their lot is over 40,000 square feet? Yes. And do you yes. happen to know if the lot on the other side of the applicant is over 40,000 square feet? On the, on the other yeah. side of the other lot? Yeah. It was, it was originally the, it was one family that was split between right. lots. Hers and the one next. But, so, but the answer to that question then is the lot on the other side of hers is also just under 40,000 square feet, right? I'm not aware of that. Yeah, I, that I think it might be, yeah, but, but whatever. Safe. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to strongly Please. disagree. Since I, they have two separate buildings besides the house, there is a large garage right next to my, uh, next to the fence. Then there is a 540 square feet barn that was converted by the husband. I, I, he showed me the whole thing. There is a bedroom, there is a bathroom, there is a kitchenette, and her brother stays there three months out of the year. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. Wait. wait. That, something's yeah. getting crossed up here. <laughs> you should is, there, the is there a third building on their lot? There's a garage. Yep. There's a, a residence. Yes. And there's a barn that's converted to an office. I'm, yes. I'm sorry. So just a moment ago when I asked you how many buildings were on the lot, yeah, and I, you told me two, what about my question was confusing? I, I stand corrected. There's three structures. One's a garage. Yeah. One's a residence. So, and the other's a barn that's used as an office. You understand that it appears to me and maybe a couple of people in the audience that you were less than entirely truthful just then. Look, I stand corrected. Okay. okay. The, the one that's and, used for and the application. Uh, clarification. Let, the one that's used for the office. Let me be a little more careful not, about that. I have not submitted but, an application. For the clarification, the one that's used for the office, does it have a bathroom facility? Yeah. It does have a Does it have kitchen facilities? No. And then what about the uh, the newly appearing barn? Does that have a bathroom or kitchen facilities no. in it? It has a bathroom. There we go. And it does not have a kitchen. Sure. 
And it doesn't have a bedroom. It's a big open space. And I wasn't trying to yeah. prove or not prove anything. I was trying to understand the characteristics of your property. Hopefully you can I understand a little bit of my frustration. I that suggest we're getting on track here. Well, well so, we so, so, so sorry, I'm sorry. I get, to like fine I get to decide what's on track and off track. And the most important thing to staying on track is answering our questions or explaining that you don't understand them if we don't ask them clearly. I already told you I, mis I misconstrued. I understand. I so in my opinion, we're still on track. And in this instance, my opinion is the one that matters. Of course. Thank you. All right. Now I think that I have a proper understanding of your client's property. Does anyone else on the board have anything to ask? Uh, if I may. <clears throat> How, in your opinion, would this be de detrimental, substantially detrimental, to the neighborhood? Um, well, I think I did identify the fact that the difference between a single uh, 912 square foot residence is a lot different than two two separate residences on a single lot, and the proposal for the accessory dwelling is just over the stone wall of my client's property, and that increase in use, that intensity of use, had, under the section says, has to be compared with whether it's more detrimental than the current nonconformity. And the current nonconformity is a modest little house. When you compare the that, the, the size of the house is, is not changing. I'm sorry? The size of the house is not changing. They're not expanding the house. Three bedrooms pre, three bedrooms post. The floor area is increased by 72%. That is a significant increase in and of itself. But in addition to that, the standard is, is it more detrimental than the existing nonconformity? And you have yet to articulate how it is detrimental, substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Because it undermines the sense of privacy, that is enjoyed by everybody in the West End that has large lots, it's usually wooded and very private. In this case, it's going to turn that feeling of living in a rural area to being all of a sudden you don't have any privacy. And it's that rural character that is cherished in the West End is situate is going to be gone with regard to my clients. And if those decisions continue to be made with regard to accessory dwellings in the rest of the West End, then you're going to lose that rural character that everybody has, it's well known in the West End. It's rural, it's private. So that is detrimental. It is detrimental to, to the neighborhood. You would agree with me that the accessory dwelling that's being proposed is on an existing structure on the land. Right, but it's used as a garage. So the difference between a garage in the backyard and a separate independent dwelling that the applicant has indicated to my clients that she intends to rent out. So that's a big difference. A garage that's used for storage, I suppose, to a new dwelling. I wouldn't it's consider. a big difference. Same building. It, yeah, it's, but it's, it's not a separate dwelling. It's the an use accessory has changed. dwelling that certain things come along with. Yeah, the use changes. You know, two, two, uh, two parking spaces are required for this. Um, a second, like, you'd agree a with secondary you? egress is required, which is a proposed to the plan. And the driveway, is, that's on the opposite side of your client's house, right? Yeah. And, ju and just to clarify, the secondary egress wouldn't be shown on a plan that would come before us. That's a that's a permit. That's not, and, I'm not. No, I'm your, your, and your your contention here is that any change in this lot from a small, less than thousand square foot uh, dwelling is um, somehow detrimental to the neighborhood because, however, by by law, by bylaw, um, this applicant could tear down the house, triple the size of it 
and do it by right. The applicant could uh, install a barn and a riding stable and start to operate a, uh, a riding school by right. There's many things that could be done on this property by right, which I would contend would be more detrimental to the neighborhood under the proposal that you're making that it has to be remain a quiet under five, under 1,000 square foot dwelling. Um, it's just you're 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 not creating any uh, case for the fact that this is substantially detrimental. In the powers of the board, we're expected to consider whether the site is appropriate location for the use and structures. It's a single family. Uh, neighborhood. It's a single-family house with an accessory dwelling. It's not two-family. It's not. It's not two single-family dwellings. It's a single-family house with an accessory dwelling, which is allowed by bylaw under special permit from the planning board. The use is de as developed will not adversely affect the neighborhood. I don't see how you can. The use is changing. It's exactly the same use that it has today. In fact, it's the same size. It's three bedrooms and three bedrooms. There will not be any undue nuisance or serious hazard to vehicles or pedestrians as a result of the proposed use or structures. I can't see again how that is changing. We're not changing the number of bedrooms. Presumably, we're not significantly increasing the number of um, uh, vehicles that would be coming and going. Um, if, the, if the applicant wanted to install bunk beds and had a family of six living in a two-bedroom house, as much as we all might find it difficult in our five-bedroom houses with three, um, three residents and, and six bathrooms, um, <laughs> you know, that's just different style. But um, adequate and appropriate facilities will be provided to assure the proper operation and proposed use of the structure. Again, uh, the proposal before <coughs> is the septic system, um, which will more than cover the uh, the concerns of the uh, three bedrooms. The applicant has, has, has demonstrated to us that the Board of Health has asked that she um, assure that there is not three bedrooms in the existing structure. I, I just don't see anything in your presentation that leads me to believe that this application is not completely well-founded, sound, and appropriate um, on this lot. You're using your argument. Anyone could come before us and say, well, gee, I've always enjoyed looking at the sun come up over through those trees over there. I don't want those trees to be removed. Or, sorry, you don't own the land, you don't control it. It's a, uh, it's a simple standard. I, am, I recognize the board has discretion, and apparently it's about to exercise it. But I'll tell you, a second dwelling on a single lot Compared to the dwelling, dwelling, an accessory dwelling it's under bylaw. It's describe it properly. More detrimental describe it properly. Describe it properly, and then it might be something I, might, I could listen to, but you're not even describing the situation properly. I think your client has something to add. Okay, we'll oh, absolutely, sir. Just your name. Michael O'Connor. And you. Beth, you have his address. Wonderful. Uh, yes. I'm not an attorney, so I have nothing to say about uh, that. that. It doesn't necessarily do you any good or bad in this room, so don't worry about it. What, what I'm going to address Mr. Tibbetts is what he just spoke about. Sure. We have a home that is about 1,800 square feet. It's got a barn and a two-car garage home. Sure. It was a barn for him. I changed it to a uh, home office. It has a bathroom in it. I went to Jennifer Lamb at the time. She said, make sure there's no more than three bedrooms, which there isn't, in the house. So that was taken care of about 20 years ago. Now, for my neighbor, which is, she's able to use, I, my attitude is she can use that for her own family all day long. But she sent us an email saying she's going to rent out. Mm -hmm. I don't want a separate family living next to our kitchen. It's that simple. I, I understand, and if I lived in your house or owned your property, yeah. I wouldn't either. That doesn't change the fact that the bylaw lays a road out for her to have that right, mm -hmm. and she's pretty much in the middle of that road as far as I can tell. Well, I guess that's a matter of discretion. But 
And, I mean, and you wouldn't also, want somebody moving in. No, no, no I, so I wouldn't want a lot of things that the bylaw allows. You could be in a similar situation on your property yeah, as a property. I mean, you, you would address the fact, I'd rather see a single family, 6,000 square foot home that one family was living in, not somebody renting out something behind but you. I, that's I, not even before, so there's being But I mean, you saw a situation, the answer is yes. Sir, I, I completely understand. Single family home owners on lots don't like living next to renters. No. That's a that is a, a very common thing. It's also hopefully you could understand a problem because we need rental homes in the world and in communities, and so that has to be there. And not everyone can afford to live in areas that are solely and commonly rental. The the bylaw exists for a reason, and it's and. To be honest, it, it's probably good that people are allowed to do things with their property that sometimes their neighbors wouldn't prefer. I totally understand where you're coming from. If I owned your property, I would feel exactly the same way. But that, but that desire doesn't give us the right alone to deny this application. That would be fine. But as you can see, the, the existing shed that I allowed her to build on my stone wall is oh, on my stone wall. wall. So just so so next to her house. Feet away. No, there, apparently there's a shed here which oh, might be. Shed. She moved in. She was renting out her house and she wanted to move the thing into that shed. Sure. So she built it on the stone wall. I said, okay, fine. At the time, now she wants to build another storage space behind this building, this the 19 yes. feet away. As you can see, it's attached. If not, it's three inches from the building. I mean, you can essentially just make a bedroom out of that, uh, that additional that unit that she's trying to put in. It's still on the So boat. what I'm saying is, is, how much storage do you need? So, well, so just to hang on for a second, and, the, and let, me, let me answer this. That storage space that she's proposing there, she absolutely will not be able to add a bedroom to or to make part of the living space because according to this application, the application she's going to take to this planning board, it will not be part of the living space. So she'd need a new application to do that. As far as it being storage space, from viewing this here and from what I can tell from the property, the planning board or our board doesn't get to say yay or nay about that storage space. Okay. It's, it's within fine. her right. That's, okay. yeah. that's fine. And then the storage space that's next to her home, the storage space that's next to our home, wall. to be honest, now that you raise it, to me looks like a shed that's in violation of the zoning bylaw. If you want to... It's a very small uh, garden even if, it's, even if it's small, it's got a it's lot a of setbacks, right? Big, it's not on a foundation, it's not built. Well, so there, there are some technicalities there. It seems like you're alleging that it's in violation of the zoning bylaw. That's a separate issue, not connected to this application. That We have a building department, we can take that up. Yep. And I would like to say that I have not said that I am going to rent this space. I'm here with my son. I have an email. I'm that sorry. In the Just email, the I back said if I would ever rent it. If. But I have also said in my application, no. we're looking for a space for my son. I have family. I'm from Europe. I have a lot of family coming over, just like they have their brothers stay all summer long in their office. Uh, I would like some of my family to stay. And so it is not with an intention. So that's a very different thing. Uh, I, I'm really very upset about this whole thing of fighting over sheds and all that. It's lots of fighting over sheds. It, it's so ridiculous. I'm sorry. I was always quite cordial with the neighbors. And now this turns into some kind of tit for tat thing. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm very sad about it. We're figuring it out. Uh, Ma'am, you had something to add? No, I'm, I'm good. OK. Anyone else from the audience have anything to add on this application? Okay. With that, do we have a motion? I would uh, move to grant the special permit and uh, grant the finding uh, to Ms. Maud Yulstey of 755 First Parish Road. Uh, under 40A Section 6 to permit the uh, extension of a pre-existing non-conforming uh, 
The extension of an existing structure, I think. Okay, and uh, the renovation of an existing structure. Renovation of an existing pre existing non conforming lot. There we go. The pre existing non conforming lot uh, at 755 First Parish Road in compliance with the plan dated March 20, uh, February 19, 2019, with Remy Engineering. Uh, and that um, the accessory dwelling will not be substantially detrimental to the neighborhood than the current pre existing nonconformities on the lot. Clarify that the renovation of the existing building will not create any new nonconformities, and to the extent that it may. They are considered not, uh, not substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Yeah, what did it say? Great. We call that the Frank edition. Good job. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Who's on that? All right. You sure? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, with that, and I apologize for the delay, we are going to jump back to our first application. You request for a special permit pursuant to section 710.2 of the bylaw to allow the installation of signage at 126 through 132 Chief Justice Highway in situate for the project known as Aaron Brook Meadow. Welcome back. How are you? Did you guys, uh, everyone got the information we submitted a week or two ago? I do, yes. They're actually uh, 12 by 5. Um, below the pictures, there's a, a dimension that describes the material as well. There we go. Tibma. So you're calling it Sanctuary at Herring Brook now? Yes. As you may recall, it was a Jay Giles record back in 1983, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the Herring Brook Sanctuary. Right? See? He knows. I was like, it wasn't Sanctuary at Herring Brook. The, 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 the album like, cover was. Uh, yes, the tenants. All right. <laughs> Punch deck in the See, you, you know. <laughs> I won't sing it for you. All right. So, we received a depiction, we received a location, we received dimensions. Anything else we should know? Uh, I think that is it. So, before. We go on. I have something. So the bylaw would allow you to have a sign be six square feet by uh, between six square feet and twenty square feet. You're looking for a sign roughly sixty square feet. Three times that. Why? Um, honestly, just to get the information we want onto the sign so that people can see it. So we've got the contractor's information, our website information, the website of the project, and then a quick depiction of timing for the move-in cycle. Yep. Did you take a look at and the signs that I mentioned. I did. I actually have that here for you. They are uh, in excess of the 20 square feet that is allowed by the bylaw. That there is an 84 square foot sign, and that is a 24 square foot sign. I, I, those were, I was looking at some others, but 
This one was approved by the bylaw. Okay. By the board. Okay. This one is six by four. You're looking for twelve by five. That is correct. I think the six by four is more telling to me than the twelve than the twenty four square feet. Um, the others. Where's that? Seaside, Seaside. Toll Brothers Project. I was look. I observed some other signs um, this week um, in front of Kennedy Brothers, which is obviously pre-existing not conforming. Um, there's a sign that I don't think is as big as the one you're off, you're suggesting here. In front of the sail loft um, between the Kennedys and North River, uh, there is a merchant sign that I think is smaller than what you're recommending here. In front of uh, Tweet Woods, what is it on on uh, meeting hub? Um, Stockbridge Woods. Stockbridge, Stockbridge, Stockbridge Landing. Stockbridge Landing, whatever it is. <laughs> The Stockbridge property, I think, is, is an 8 by 10, I mean, a, a, a 4 by 8. Um, it may be 10 by 4, but it's basically a piece of plywood in, in size. Um, again, this is much larger than those, um, and that's where I have a concern. They're, they're obviously doing much the same thing as you are. Um, as a matter of fact, I'd argue that they're doing exactly the same thing as you are on Stockbridge, and um, able to do it on a smaller scale. I would say the difference, as we heard at the public meeting, is that people tend to speed on, the street. on this length of road. You're on a 50 mile an hour street. Right? Yeah. So, Just one more. I promise so the idea promise. is that the bigger the sign, the easier it is to read as folks speed by the entrance. And the less of a distraction. Less, less of a distraction than the safety. Safety issue on the ramp. So on that note, while we're talking about this, talk to me about how this sound is going to become one with the fence. It will become one with the fence. It's made out of a similar material that the screw is currently used for the chain link. Right. So basically, it just has these metal grommets that you zip tie them in. So it's flush with the fence, sits on the fence, looks just like the. Um, the screw that's on the fence currently. And what's the material it's made of? This is a. It is a vinyl mesh banner. Okay. Because we've had some trouble in the past with some of the screening and a prior sign, maybe, or maybe it was just a screening blowing down. So this is going to be more thoroughly secured. Is that, that is correct? the goal, yeah. So it'll have metal grommets. It's like a, a metal circle inserted into the vine, the right. vinyl sign. Yeah, the intent is that it will not be flying away. It's going to be secured to the fence via some more sturdy components. Yes. Like metal and some more industrial grade fasteners. Yep. Okay. Have anything else before we open it up? We did get some correspondence. Two folks requesting will be denied. Uh, the next door neighbor, Marsha Klein, and Someone down the street, Kathleen Donahue. Um, <coughs> and the, after reading both letters, they don't like the project, and we, this board ended up approving the project, and they think we should say no to the sign. We've said, is, the, we've said yes, now it's time to say no. The, both of the authors of those letters are here tonight, and so I think we're going to hear from them that is not an incorrect summary of those letters, in my opinion, but I, I want to hear from them directly. Uh, yes, ma'am. Marshal Klein, I did not say I was opposed to the project, Mr. Sullivan. You misinterpreted my reading. I said I was opposed to the large sign. I was opposed to the destruction that it was doing to my house, which directly abuts it. And he spoke very eloquently, or I guess it was Edward, about how you want to take care of the builders, but you also want to take care of the abutters. I think you, in the building, there's been little attention made to my cares. I think the sign is, it is, a, is a residential area, and I think the request for a sign is excessive. I know that they need a sign, but I don't think they need one as large as that. I know, I said, if you read my letter correctly, I said there is a reason for affordable housing, but I don't think we need a sign as large as that. That was the gist of my letter, and I'm sorry that you misinterpreted it, sir. 
I, I have a follow-up question. Something I'm struggling with, and I agree, it's a big sound. It's also going on a construction fence that's already there. Okay. So, but, but, but just one second, and I do want to hear from you. I, I want to understand more. There's a gross green construction fence there already. And putting aside for a second the sign blowing off the fence, which is a huge issue that we just talked about, we're going to talk about more before this is through. But to the extent there's a construction project there, and the sign isn't any bigger than the fence, and it says what's going on there, and the sign looks pretty nice. Well, I, we, haven't it. It. we haven't seen it. Uh, well, well it, it will be in the application, and you can, by all means, you come up here and look at this I can get further. It, um, and now, it's a big sign, and I'm not saying it's an appropriately set of sign. I just, I would like to get your thoughts on, it's not like there's open land somewhere and they're sticking a sign in the ground. I'm going to have to look at that sign. Sure, of course. And that, that's I just that the, I understand that the project has to be built. It's a bad conflict. I understand that. But you have done nothing to address my concerns. I see that pound of dirt going up. If the dirt is going to go, it's going to be higher than my property, and all the fill is going to go into my land. You have spoken so eloquently of what you'll do for them, but you have nothing to do to address my concerns. I just say, we ought to stop somewhere and try and help us. I, I understand you know your point. You don't so, well, well, I would like to discuss this further with you so that I can understand further. The items you just described to me, it sounds like you're asking us to say no on the sign because they've gotten other things. It's, I'm asking you to say no because I think it's excessively large. And, and so my question I, is, since it's going on a fence that is already there, what, what makes the fence worse because there's words on it, essentially? And, because and I, you're giving them everything they want. Okay, that's, that's an answer. And, they're, and they're, why don't you consider us? I, that's, I'm sorry to be emotional, no, that's but they've right. torn down all the trees, they destroyed the land there, Pe my, my, all the people who come by my house say, well, what have they done? They've destroyed the marshland, they've just done everything. I know that 40 bees are necessary, I do not deny them. I'm sorry that I'm getting upset. You don't need to apologize. But basically, I'm, you, know, you just have done it all, and you've forgotten that there are neighbors who have bought. One neighbor particularly who has suffered because of it. And also other people. The sounds are vibrating, and you just have not addressed that. And you're going to give them the sign and whatever else they want. That's the way I feel. And I'm sorry to be so emotional about it. I, I don't think you need to apologize. I think that I could see myself being that emotional if I was in that position. I understand that I am not in that position. I, you know, I think at certain points, and I can't say I would do any better. You guys have understood the position that we're in. I don't think, I don't think you guys believe that anyone on the board feels that this is the best place for 60-something units in situate, or even the 100th best place. But hopefully you understand that with the handcuffs that are put on us by the law, and I would go one step further than what you said, Affordable housing is necessary. I'm not so sure 40 bees are necessary. I'm not so sure it's a great law. We were handcuffed a little bit more than I wish we were in this instance. But we, we really did try, and I apologize and understand that we didn't seem like that at every turn, to do as well as we could for the neighbors and the residents of the town with this application. Yep. And, I, and I'm, I, that wasn't me asking for you to agree with me, because you don't have to, and I'm not sure I would if I was in your chair. But on this sign, the, the only area where I'm struggling is, I can't defend a decision by us if we're saying no to this sign because we don't like the product as a whole. I and, it, it's not about the property. Why, why can't there be a compromise? Why does it have to be? Five times, what is it, five times than what is allowed under this town law? How much larger is it? 
It's it's about three times as. as so why large. can't you make a compromise? Well, well, because the the bylaw does allow for you to get larger than that square footage. You have to come to us and ask for relief, and it's relief that has been granted. Now maybe this is too large, absolutely, but. I'm trying to get an understanding of why a little bit smaller would be better, other than just penalizing the developer. Why are you penalizing him? He's gotten everything he wants. Well, you I said he could build understand. further to the road than he's going to. You said he could build higher up than he's going to. I know your hands are tied, but you've done everything that he's wanted. Yes. Our, so, hand, our hands are tied even to the degree that if they don't like our decision on the sign, they can appeal that. Pardon me, sir? Our hands are even tied if they don't like our decision on the sign, they could appeal that. You mean they can appeal that also? Yes, okay. they can appeal everything. And what's important is that we come, if we were limiting this sign, it's important that we identify in these meetings, and, and that's where I'm looking for some help, why we should be limiting a sign that's attached to a fence that's already there. It's, I understand you don't want the sign. I really do. I want, I, it's not, I don't want a sign that big. I, and I why understand. Why do they have to look at the sign from their house? I understand. That's why I would love to hear from you, well, the abutters, why this sign is worse than the fence. I am not saying it isn't. I would just like to hear from you why it is. That gives us something that could be the basis for a denial or a limitation. I just think there ought to be some compromise. I, I know that a sign no. is necessary, but it doesn't have to be so big. And why right. should the Lannans have to go look out their window and see that sign? It's bad enough that we hear our house vibrating, and they I know that th your hands are tied, but you have, to, you have done nothing to think about any of your butters, the Lannans and myself. And I, that's, actually I actually take exception to that. We, we, were, we actually denied this. Thinking about the abutters, we said no. We went. We did. We bought it in court. We have tried I'm, everything we can, I'm, I'm and we have worked that very that. hard to make sure that the decision that was approved takes into consideration as best possible the abutters. Unfortunately, Commonwealth of Massachusetts and their wisdom have removed the power of this board to deny this way back. So now we're simply talking about a sign. I mean, coming up to this point, I think we've tried very hard to consider the abutters from day one. It what we can't, I know it may not feel like that, but we've, we've denied it. We've, we can't, I would say the Commonwealth hasn't done much, the Appeals Court hasn't done much, but it's, We've, been, we've tried to What's going to happen when all that water comes into my yard? Who's going to take care of me? I'm sorry. I see that mound going up. And now you're going to get them assigned. So basically, I know the state is the heads are tied. And I'm sorry to be so emotional about it. Yes, and we'll come back to you if you have some it's more. It's all right. Sir, sir. I know it's going to be approved, but I just feel absolutely well, defeated I, by I, the whole thing. To be very honest, I don't know that it's going to be approved, but I do need more of a reason as to why we shouldn't. I need, I need more elaboration on why we shouldn't, well, specific I, I, to the that, sign. That Frank absolutely. Why don't you speak? Frank Kildoff, 125, Chief Justice Cushing. Thank you. It's... The sign, as presented, is principally advertising. Um, at the rate people drive past it, they might be able to get a quarter of what's written there. So putting a lot of information on the sign, even if it's a big sign, I don't see the point. Second I issue in my mind is the fence is a temporary blockage for safety reasons. It's not a permanent part of the, of the development. There are setback requirements, as I recall, written to the bylaws as far as signage, this would violate them as far as I'm aware. So, but, but to that point, my understanding is we'd be approving the sign that would be temporarily, temporary well, in, 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 coercion, in cohesion with the fence. Right. The duration wasn't stated. So whether so it was lighter or not it, wasn't stated. And that's, well, and that's not necessarily on him, we just haven't gotten there yet. I, I have no intention 
of approving a permanent sign that is anywhere near this large, and I have my own, I can defend that decision and that denial well, if, without you know, help. I, I guess so, I could reverse the argument and say, why not, why not make it three times bigger? Utilize the whole fence. I don't, I don't think you want to make that argument. I don't. But, yes. But that's, the logic is, well, there's a fence there, why not put a big, big sign on it? And that's what but I'm struggling with as to why we should limit this. But it's a that, residential neighborhood. That's why you wouldn't put a big okay, sign on Okay. There's, there's, there's a reason. Right. So, so, so making it three times what the law basically says is okay seems excessive. So that they can put a, a lovely, you know, pictorial of the wildlife they pushed out and put in some extra advertising. Really, the person driving by needs to know who the developer is. Well, to be they need to know who the general contractor is. Well, if there's an issue at the site, having the number front and center for the general contractor is actually a huge plus and probably a huge plus for the surrounding neighborhood. As Wouldn't well. that be in the website? Well, yeah, but if you're walking by and there's an issue at the site, to have the phone number there, is a that's actually, yeah. that's, I mean, right I, I understand we don't like the sign, we don't like the project, but no, having the phone number out front is a good idea. I so. think the size of the sign is, is excessive. Okay, and that's, that's a valid point. That's all we're trying to say. I understand. Um, yes, sir. Um, so, uh, Brian Landing, 133. <clears throat> so back to our last meeting, I mentioned how the fence, the tarp was should be on the other side, and a few minute, few uh, days after that meeting, it was moved to uh, their side, which we're all happy about. Um, it still it still blew off; those metal brackets broke, but at least it didn't fly into the road, so it is an improvement. But those um, those metal brackets you described, they're, they they just break off from the wind. There's plenty of them lying in the ground there. You can take a look. You know they say they're supposed to pick up the debris on a daily basis. Those those metal brackets have been sitting there for. I don't know how long the fence has been up, and that that sign can't be. Well, I would assume it can't be on their side of the fence because the fence would be blocking the sign partially. So it'd have to be on um, the <clears throat> the road side of the fence, and I think that's much more prone to the wind blowing from from the east, blowing it out into the road. And those, unless if there's totally different middle brackets. Um, I could imagine that blowing off just like the tarp did, blowing into the road. It could easily blow right into a windshield of a car, cause a car accident, which should be unfortunate seeing how like sanctuary, which is the big, big part of the sign, is supposed to be like a refuge of safety. Um, the other thing I had, like the, the notice for tonight, it says it's pursuant to 710.2. I would argue that it's not, that like, that's incorrect, that it's not, because 7. 10.2b says that a special permit, which these people are asking for, cannot exceed 20 feet. So I'm not sure if that would be a different code that you're like. Um, it's, a, it's actually 710.2c allows for up to 100 square feet with our approval. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Brian, the grommets that you saw that were torn off, because you've seen the sign and I have not, how far apart were they spaced? If you can. Characterized. Um, they were on the top and bottom, probably every maybe two or three feet. I'm, I'm not really sure though. I think so. Yeah, go that, ahead. I think it's helpful because that didn't work. Mm -hmm. So they need to further grommet whatever sign gets approved and fix it. And what was torn off? Was that perforated or was it a piece of solid, whatever fabric? It was like. Plastic tarp. I mean, it was. I, I don't think the wind can like blow through it. It's like. Okay, because they 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 do make fencing that is perforated, and then they do make fencing that you can't see through. So. Oh, you can you can partially see through it, but the the, the green tarp you can just barely kind of see through it. But it's mostly non-transparent. I think overall, for the construction reasons, for the sign, whatever. We've got to get a bit better at sticking this stuff onto the fence so it doesn't blow down. It does. I don't know a lot about construction and signs, but you guys are building 60 units in a marsh. I feel like you have the technology to make sure the sign doesn't blow off the fence. That's and we'll, we'll definitely be stepping that up, and we'll have to find some way to put that in the decision. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm Sarah Lynn, it's 133. The only thing I'm going to say, so the picture of the sign, is that directly in front of our driveway. 
Is that the first opening? Like the, the, the Northgate, North gate, the North gate. What so gate is that? Is it the North gate? This, I, I, once again, it's... That's, is it the North gate or the South gate? Uh, it's, it's the North so, gate. All right, so it's... Well, that, that looks too like the South gate. It's the Southern gate. It's, it's directly it's, opposite my drive. I'm only, I only, I'm only going to say... Is, what side is it? We might, we'll be putting it at the On the plan gate. that they submitted, it looks like it's on the North gate. It'll, it'll be to the right hand side of the north gate is the sign we are being asked to approve. Right, because I'm only, I'm only bringing it up that if you're driving by, like, I mean, you know it's 50 mile an hour. If you're driving by, obviously there's no sidewalk, there's no place, you, there's no parking all along there because they have their signs up. If somebody wanted to like slow down, stop, read the sign, where are they pulling over to do this? If they had to pull over, and I'm, re I'm going to kind of just backtrack a little bit. We do have some workers that get dropped off in the morning, and they get picked up in the afternoon. And when they get dropped off, their car pulls on our front lawn. They get dropped off. They do a U-turn. They have pulled in our driveway before, not recently. And then they get picked up in the afternoon. There's no place for a car. Like, like it's, you know, the sign is it's not like facing as people are going by. It's, it's, it's one of those signs you can see as you're going by. So if somebody did want to pull over and check out the sign, it's much like when you pull over to look at a car for sale on the side of the road or something. There's no place for anyone to pull over here. I, I, I agree. Yeah. There isn't any place for someone to pull line. over. <laughs> but but, the, but that problem gets worse the smaller the sign gets, right? But it's just, it, I know the sign thing, but it's, a, it's I, I, you know, like, I don't mind it on the fence, but I'm just saying, if somebody wanted to pull over, are they going to be able to pull into the property to look at the sign? I, I think that they would hopefully pull over on that side, or they would pull over on your side. But yeah. that's that's a problem of a sign at all, yeah. and maybe even a problem of a construction site that people have no idea what it is. They might pull over and take a look too. It's I not it's ideal, but it's, it's a tough yeah. thing because when they do come to unlock the gate in the morning, this we've had big, big trucks out there parked right like you know blocking our driveway so the gentleman can get out go across the street unlock the gate and we've had times we, we can't get out and when we do go to get out they don't let us go out they go in front like we can't see the traffic coming 50 miles an hour i mean it, it is it has been tough there's been a few times where it's just been time so you know not the right way i mean it was just it was just the other day when my husband was trying to pull out to get to work and there was a truck right out there, guys go in the gate, can't get the gate shut, it's trying to lock the gate. We have the big tractor trailer parked right there. We can't go anywhere. I mean, we can't see, we can't see. And, 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 you know, and you, if, you, if we do have cars stopping to read that sign, I don't know, just throwing it out there, but uh, we do have workers that do get dropped off and picked up and they think nothing of pulling on our front lawn, backing into our driveway, making a, making a U-turn you know, in the front. It, it, it's, it, is a, it is a dangerous, spot. Trust me, I mean, I've lived there for 24 years. It's, it's a dangerous pulling in and pulling out. I mean, it, unfortunately, this is going to be a tough thing when there's 60 people, 60 units across the street. I mean, I don't know if there's some day there's going to be a light set up or stop signs or whatever, but I mean, it's, it's 50 miles an hour. It's a tough spot. And then to have something for people that are going to try to look over and read, I don't know. It's, it's tough no matter how you put it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Are the, are the units that are like labeled as well? I know they're all technically like affordable because they're rentals. So about a quarter of them. A quarter, a quarter of them are like lower priced. Yes. Like, are those like considered luxury as well? Like for the low income ones. I, yeah. Typically, they'll be they'll be similarly laid out, and it's a. Uh, we're getting into a little bit more nuance of the, of the 40B statute, but they can't make three quarters of the building very nice and have, have these run down, yeah. noticeably different units. They can't be distinguishable as different. Yeah. 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 Okay. You can have you can have a, a lesser finish on like kitchen cabinets and countertops, things like that, but, but you can't have an appearance of different uh, quality from 
street or from the house, you know, going by, you can't be able to identify which is which. I have a question not related to the signage, but is the developer the same developer who originally asked for the petition and was granted? The anglers are still involved in the project, yes. But the, what? I'm just curious because yeah, the name has changed. Yes, they, they changed their name. A good deal of that is due to, they formed what's called a special purpose entity to run this project once it became a project. They are still involved. I just would like to state one more thing. I'm not opposed to having housing next to me. This gentleman seemed to feel that I was that. No, I, I don't think he, he meant it that strongly. But, but I, just, I just feel that it's overwhelming. I couldn't totally and understand. Another sign, a large sign is a sink. It's another symbol of the overwhelmingness of this project and what it's doing. Ma'am, you had something. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, Sam Havens, 25 Holocaust. I was just wondering, are there different prices for these apartments on different floors, or are they all body B? No, so 25% so of the units, I think it's roughly, I'm using round numbers, it's going to be roughly 15 affordable units, maybe 16 affordable units in the project. I'm not, I don't even believe that all of them will not be the same price, and then there will the other 45 or so units are of differing bedroom amounts and differing views. And market value. And, and yeah, and they, and they will, I'm sure, will not all be priced the same. Maybe all this information should be in the sign. There, there'll be one and two bedroom we'll, units uh, that, are, that are affordable. We'll, we'll take, but we'll the take prices, comments and even good jokes uh, when we call The them. prices won't be set until after they're constructed. And then it's based on, it's based on government statistics for income in this area. For the affordable units. Yeah, for the, for the affordable units. That's set, those rates are set by the state. They, the developer is, is not involved. And to most of us, the numbers will not sound affordable. They'll just sound, but they will sound they will cheaper. Be affordable. They'll be cheaper, but they will sound affordable. Yeah, good deal. Yes? Um, on the north part of like, the property, there's this, um, I think it's like a right of uh, easement, of a right of... Um, right of way. Right of way, yes. yes. Um, when, when the silk fence was originally put around the property, <coughs> it went across that right of way. And I think a few days after, like some type of vehicle drove through it, where I guess almost the end of the property, I, I don't know. Um, so the silk fence was destroyed and they put it up so it wasn't interfering with the right of way. And just recently they put it back over the right of way and they've been digging like around the right of way and putting gravel down. I just thought that would be a minor concern to bring up. In case if that property owner decides to use that right of, right of way, it's kind of unaccessible. It's that the. Is it, is it that road that goes up, like it goes east to west? Is the conservation line? Or is it the mining right of way? Yeah, I'm, huh? I don't. I don't think it's a right of way. I think it's. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a right of way between. Uh, yeah, Mr. Lyons' property and this property. I don't think it's any right of way. I I think that that might be about, that might that path, for lack of a better word, might belong to the project. Right. Okay. Yeah. And it's just this very small section of that path. Yeah. I think we should come back to you for a minute. This is 12 by 5. It What I struggle with is saying that it should be five feet smaller or 20 square feet smaller. It's going on a fence that's already there. And, and arguably, you make a smaller sign, it's harder to read on 3A. And it's uh, to go to the temporary nature of it, my understanding, and, and anyone, please, is that this fence, the purpose of this sign 
is to provide information about the project while the project is being constructed. When the project is constructed, the fence comes down, the sign comes down with it. That's correct. Yeah, I, I think the, the signs that I've mentioned, particularly this one, this one permanent one, which was permitted by this board, um, that's, that's going to be there forever. Um, this one, which is a temporary for sale sign type thing, um, exceeds what would normally be a residential zone for sale sign, but it's not as big as what you're proposing. The others that I described, the one on um, Stockbridge, is a freestanding sign. Um, uh, because this is on a fence, I have less concern. The temporary aspect of it is defined by the fact that the fence is only going to be temporary. And, and the more temporary the fence is, the more temporary the sign is. Um, you mentioned, Mr. Kildup, about the, uh, uh, whether it was lighted or not. I, there's never been a proposal that I've seen about lighting it, and I would be adverse to that right off the bat. I, mean, so, I don't see the point. So if you, if you approve it, do you approve it with a condition that when the sign, when the fence goes, the sign goes? Absolutely. Absolutely. My next question back to you then for a new sign. How long do they anticipate the fence to be there? So they have to come back for another one? They'll have to come back for a permanent sign, just like um, yeah. the project, the Toll Brothers project, the Dif different fence and uh, a different sign, but it's you for a permanent sign for them. And I would anticipate on this type of a project, I mean, the Toll Brothers gates open onto a, uh, you know, an estate type area. That type of thing, I don't think, would be consistent with this property. Um, this this property is a building; it's much more appropriate to have a small kiosk-type sign near the building, you know, office model, whatever. Um, once this, you're in a position to be able to drive in into the circle, so uh, as the infrastructure improves, the need for a sign on the street declines. Probably be spring of 2021 when we're you know opening the place up. The construction fence will come down. So and then for about a year. Yeah, we're looking for a year. Well, any any proposal I would say we we grant it for a 12 month period. Yeah. I mean, we saw months from the first month. Yeah. Yeah. The, other, the other issue is we've had issues with this fence coming down, right? Yeah. So to incentivize them to um, secure it properly, yep. I would say, I, I would suggest that if it does come down, uh, it doesn't go back up. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I think I think if this comes down short of a named storm, I think is what I would say. Or vandalism. Like, or, well, that's a good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that come down. But, but it if if this thing blows down short of a named storm, or uh, yes. you know, obviously if it's in, if it's removed, it's removed. But if this blows down short of a named storm, I think you got to come back to us for uh, to talk about it again before it goes back up. Okay. Um, that comment on vandalism, it seems as though someone would just drive by and cut the thing down immediately. Well, you're, you're going to you're gonna put it up in a way that it would be more significant vandalism if they did drive by and cut it down. Okay. And, yes. If it comes down to natural problems, yeah, you, you, short of the next yeah, yeah. I mean, vandalism, if the sense of is removed, if a, if a car drives through it, there's an accident in front of it that should be, you know, that's a whole other issue. <coughs> yeah. If it ends up in the street on a night that nothing else blew down, yeah, we're probably going to tell you to put that. Don't okay. worry about that. Um, I, will, I, will, I mean, we just we just need to know you guys are going to put up, you got to spend a little more time and money on the fence sign. and the sign yeah. than you did the first time around because of that. Because it, I mean, it, is, it is a safety issue for everybody that goes by. It is a safety issue for the neighbors. Totally agree. You've heard, you've heard the neighbors express other safety issues as well. 
to, I think you guys need to show good faith that you're trying hard to, to keep the neighbors safe. We got to bolt this. We got to bolt this thing on. I noticed you took notes too, so I'm guessing you're relaying those sentiments. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. A word to the wise. Along that same note, I, the applicants were here, presenting themselves with a lot of good intention. I still argue that they did a uh, very credible job in a difficult situation. But um, if we continue to get here complaints about parking trucks, it's not going to be up to the code enforcement officer. I'm going to be asking that uh, the angle come in and talk to us again. Yeah, I think I yeah, I, I think that I think that makes sense. I I also think that. It was bad for a period, and then it got a lot better after it was brought to the English attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm proposing that, that is the case, but it, yeah. it can't continue. It's, no. It's, there's been too much concern, uh, too much good faith will be washed down the drain if it continues. And if I, can, I recognize that it's subcontractors, you contract in various stages, you have different contractors, different folks responsible, but there should be someone with, with an overall responsibility on the property who's able to enforce those things other than our code enforcement officer. Well, okay. was that we did relay that strongly to the contractor last time, so we do hope that it was. And I think it did make a difference. And you've heard, once again tonight, concerns of the neighbors and if those things are shared, that would be helpful. Okay. Absolutely well. And if you watch on YouTube, yes, live and in person. Yeah. Um, so we have, the proposal is 12 feet by 5 feet, before we start throwing around, does anyone, before we start throwing around motions and, and, and voting here and there, does anyone feel strongly about an alternative size? I'm going to revise my comments, I, I think the permanence and, and separate structure nature of those signs that I uh, described earlier warranted their size and being smaller. Uh, the fact that it's on the fence and temporary to the term of the fence, I have less concern with the size. So, uh, I have a motion to grant the special permit requested by the applicant for a 12 by 5 foot sign consistent with the depiction and photographs submitted with the application. And the special permit be granted under 710.2C and that the special permit be granted with the conditions that the sign is secured and attached to the right side of the north construction entrance on the existing temporary construction fence that the fence shall last uh, excuse me that the sign shall exist up to and including March 1st of 2021 with any extension of that needing to be a request made to this board. And with a further condition that the sign should be better secured than the construction fence and screening has been done in the past and that if whatever is used to secure it fails in something short of a named storm that the applicant will need to reapply for said sign. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you. Thank all of you. Yeah, sure.
Next up is uh, the application of Leo and Marianne Zona of E.A. Joseph Way in Norwell requesting a special permit slash finding pursuant to section 810.2 of the Citroen Zoning Bylaw in Massachusetts General Law Chapter 48, Section 6 to allow the extension of a pre-existing non-conforming structure and increasing the gross floor area by greater than 20%. Property is located at 10 Michael Ave in Situate. Representing the applicant this evening is Brendan Sullivan of Cabanaro Consulting. Good evening, Brendan. Evening. Uh, for the record, uh, Brendan Sullivan from Cabanaro Consulting. Here with the applicant in the um, Zona. Um, I've done what I don't like typically doing is submitting revised plans on the night of the hearing, um, but we made a slight revision to the rear of the property. Um, <coughs> that I can show you in the plan. So the, the property is located at uh, uh, 10 Michael Ave, and it's um, it's a conforming lot in size, frontage, um, area. Uh, it is um, non-conforming with, with regard to front yard setback and the right yard setback, and also the rear setback. Um, there's an existing detached garage on the, on the site that, um, that it is conforming um, with the accessory um, structure provision. I think it's about eight and a half feet off the rear setback line. Um, the requirement is eight feet. Um, so what the proposal is to, is to basically keep the main house um, the way it is. Uh, they're actually rehabbing the inside as we speak. Um, uh, the roof line is going to stay the same on the existing house. Um, and we're doing uh, in addition an attached three car garage um, um, on the left hand side of the um, structure that will be conforming with uh, rear yard setback and the left side setback. The, the, the change I submitted is a um, rear yard setback is there's a chimney in the back and there's also a bulkhead. The chimney um, which is which I believe is supposed to be adhered by building setbacks is 17.7 feet. The chimney is coming down, um, and in part of the renovation processes, um, it was found that that rear wall, that north-facing wall, was rotted, and it was uh, um, uh, not a substantial enough foundation to support the new structure. Um, so the foundation is going to come out. So we're going to bump that wall in six inches to make it meet the 20-foot rear yard setback. Bonus. Um, there is a there is a second story going above that um, on a small portion of it for a master bath. Sorry, just to go back to that rear wall. Yeah. So is that? I'm seeing 19.3. But I'll have two. 19.4 is the right where it was. The original There you go. Yes. Not my plan. Thank you. Um, so originally we were, we were asking for a. Um, um, to keep the maintain the existing, but that's actually one story in the back. We were going to go up another story, uh, which I didn't think we would like that much either. So uh, we were able to bump that whole wall back six inches um, and meet the 20 foot uh, radar and said, Well, like I said, the chimney is coming down. If it isn't down already, it's down now. It's down now. Okay, so the chimney is already gone. Uh, the bulkhead will remain in that location. And the, um, the shower enclosure, is that staying there? I'm sorry. The shower enclosure. Yeah, the shower's going to be on the side. Oh, okay. Shower's going to be inside. Nobody, um, gets, nobody gets rid of outdoor showers in the situation. I know. So the only other, the only other um, minor change was the, uh, there is going to be a second story deck off the master bedroom on the right front corner of the, of the dwelling. It's based, so it's basically going to sit on top of the porch that's there. So sorry, that is a covered porch now or not a covered porch? It is. The deck covered porch the now is going to be on top of it. I got you. Yeah. Is the deck going to be covered? Or is it no. A covered deck would be a porch. Yep. Okay. So, okay. question just so I can understand the, the existing garage okay, goes <laughs> The existing garage goes away. 
Yes. So where you have where it says concrete apron is that that whole section is the sec uh, second story addition, right? So you're building a second story and then three car garage underneath. Yes. Okay. Yep. And the driver will be reconfigured to accommodate that right. car garage. I have no questions. Yeah. We're not proposing any signs. It's good. Where's the hidden barn? Okay, stop. I can't stop. They know they got to smell I'm bad. I am. Actually, I thought it was pretty good thus far. I could have one word. That's on the adjacent property. Yeah. Hidden barns. Yeah. All right. Well, we do have some correspondence. Correspondence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. First one is I believe the gentleman couldn't make it tonight. So we just have his letter. There's a column by Ian Barrett. Yes. Does anybody want to summarize uh, Mr. Barrett's letter? Other than the sour grapes? Go down with his man. So, uh, Mr. Barrett, uh, Paul and Diane Barrett of 14 Michael Ave, which is the abutting property uh, further from the ocean uh, to the north, uh, wrote a letter to whom it may concern. Um, Paul's on a business trip. We can't make the meeting. We're direct to Butters. Uh, Third Cliff neighborhood, uh, Welch Colonials, Michael Ave. Last remaining collection of uh, Welch Colonials, which we've heard uh, essentially the architectural lines are going to be preserved at the Welch Colonial yes. with the proposed construction. Um, the houses don't have uh, setbacks, although this is going to be more conforming post construction than pre construction. The rear setback will be raised. Yeah. Um, has a two-foot side lot setback. Um, uh, current project comes before the board because it's uh, going to increase the gross floor area by more than 20%. Um, there will be, well, he talks about what was going to be, but that has changed. Um, it'll come within the allowable uh, setback property line. Um, there'll be a 30-foot vertical high wall within 14 feet of our home, creating a very narrow separation between the structures and the feeling of being in an urban setting rather than on Third Cliff and Situate. The effect is heightened by the fact that the easterly side of our home has been pierced with windows to maximize the views toward the ocean, the back half of our home would be in the permanent shadow of such an addition, which is out of context with the rest of the neighborhood and will directly increase building density and intensity locally for our home. See attached photographs. A further point to consider is the current home is only two feet from the property line on the other existing side of the building, and the combined footprint will yield a total side yard setback of less than 12 feet combined, uh, two feet plus nine feet, nine inches. The proposed width is, um, Four feet more in total than the current setback law allows for. In summary, the proposed project is just too big for the lot, too big for the neighborhood, will impose a significant detriment to the enjoyment and value of our home, as well as those of our immediate neighbors. Uh, we'd ask the board, uh, we'd ask the proposed addition be redesigned and move the side setback away from our home at least four feet to achieve the combined setback totals envisioned by the current zoning. Ideally, the setback is even wider. We'd also request a change in side elevation roof style so that the massive 30 foot vertical wall moves back at the roof line from the property line. Uh, they have another uh, couple of options that they propose. Please contact us if you have any questions. I have a question. Just for uh, clarification, so that, that is the dwelling on the yeah, left hand side of the the locus and their house is about equally distant front yard setback um, and so their views are are to the ocean which is in this direction um, 
I mean, our, our design is that the garages step back. They could certainly be forward more, which would take away more of their views. Um, I believe most of their views are from the, the, the front of the house, the front corner of the house, which they will be, they will be um, you know, unchanged from the proposed addition. Yeah. We are, we are not unfamiliar with those uh, arguments. Yeah. Further, further from the shore, not liking when the house is in between them and the shore uh, grow larger. Uh, the front yard setback of 29.1, did you investigate um, front yard setbacks and the, the average on the street? Um, and looking at the one to the right, to the east, looks like it may be as close as yours. Okay. Yeah, using the average setback, that may be conforming. That's I'm not... Oh, there aren't that many of them? Yeah. They're just, they're just looking at the yeah. layout. Or you can take all of them within 200 feet, so yeah. probably almost the entire street. Right, right. Up to intersections. Yeah. Um, we did not take that into account. So it, it's close. I mean, yeah. They're all, I mean, it's, it's a less than a foot off anyway, but it's. Right. It doesn't. It where does you're stand not out? extending the drip edge, you're not even extending it, let alone creating new footprint in that. It probably doesn't make too much of a difference, but yeah. It doesn't matter. It may be conforming, Mr. Fender, I said that. Right. Just for it. It's um, worth the consideration. Of right. this type yep. of thing. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience have anything to add on this application? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is Brian Jones, 6 Michael Lab, immediately to the right or east of the property. Yep. And uh, I'm just here to speak uh, in favor of it. Right. So, I don't think what they're proposing is is too much different than everything else that's been done up the street. And uh, speaking of the, the front yard setback, all those Welsh colonials, and we have one of them, I think they're all pretty much right in line all the way down through. So um, I wish it was always walking on the front yard. No Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Buy that man beer. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> With that, make a motion on the application of Leo, Mary, and donor of 20 GA Joseph Way, Noel Mass, for the request for a special permit finding to 810.2 National Law, Chapter 48, Section 6, for the um, additions as proposed on the plan prepared by Kevin Marrow Consulting, dated January 14, 2020 as modified February 27th, 2020. Um, that the proposed additions do not create any new or intensify any nonconformities and to the extent that they do, um, it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that one. Tom's got the accessory dwelling. Okay. I got the sign. Ed's got the sign. Thank you. 
I brought the plot plan. I hadn't seen the line, and Bob told me to go to you. Because I was on my way in and I can turn it. He saw it as soon as he opened the plan, and I hadn't, I hadn't even opened it yet. I came right from the engineers to put it up. Oh, you did? Good work. Weird. Especially if it was in the marriage. That was strange. It was, they had the bylaw that they were considering it might be the variance if it was a duplex. But the definition of a duplex is a two dwellings within impervious demising wall. Right. And I had drawn a wall that between the two units because I thought of it as two family, two family members, and not right. both sides of the yeah. so it's not it's a, it's a two, it's a two family unit right. in a structure. And that's a little design feature. Good work. I didn't even complain. With that, our fifth, fifth application on the light, on the night, Excuse me. Mark Brown of 10 Linda Road in Pembroke requests a special permit finding pursuant to 810.2, the situate zoning bylaw and or MGL chapter 48 section 6, to allow the extension of an existing structure on a pre-existing non-conforming lot, increasing the growth floor area by more than 20% for property located at 17 Mordecai Lincoln Road. Hi there. Hello. What's going on? Well, Front of the house is too close to the street. Yep. Where I'm proposing to do work on the uh, structure is um, in, in the conforming section of the home I do. And um, it's pretty simple. We're just looking to put a second story on the center of the house there. And um, in the process, the house is going to get resided. It's going to look like great. And for, the record, for the record, Mark, you're um, you got the property on your yard. Yeah, now, Susan Morgan. That, that caught my attention. I am uh, representing Susan and uh, Bill Logan of uh, somewhere north of here, right? <laughs> but, uh, but they but they own the well, property. They, they own the property. They, they own the property. property. I'm no the property. property. No owner. I'm the contractor. No problem. Um, and the house presently sits at 1,582 square feet. You're going to 2,342. There was approximately a 20 by 30, 32 foot uh, addition on the second floor. There's not currently a second story on that section of the home. And that wall, as you can see on the on this wall, the kitchen is actually going to be extended out into the driveway. Um, but the second story is only going to incorporate six, I mean, a, a foot and a half of that eight feet. I got you. The rest of that kitchen is going to have its own roof and be a second story. And we're not, we're not moving the driveway or anything no, like that? Nothing's changing. The driveway's getting smaller. It's massive right now, so there we go. it goes all the way down the side of the house. But, right. And then there'll, there'll still be a brick patio to the left of the house as you're facing it. Or just yeah, she's actually going to remove out. most of that brick because it's it's the part that is beyond where the addition is going to be is poorer brick. <laughs> yeah. Nicer brick is closer to the house, so it's coming out anyway. Yep. Yeah. And the wetland buffer zone isn't isn't our problem, right? 
and some side of the That's way in the back. Right. Yeah, so it drops off to the well, tracks. The, 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 the addition is in what's categorized as a resource area because it's within 100 feet, but it's uh, it's way out of our jurisdiction. Right. Oh, great. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Good to us. You, right. you, you will need relief from the Conservation Commission. Okay. That's, that's good to know. <laughs> yes. Bob's good at reminding you. Yeah. yeah. Do what's called a request for determination of applicability. Yeah. I've done RDAs before. Yeah. I do a lot of work on Homer Rock, so I can't. There you go. <laughs> get familiar. You get familiar with You don't RDAs have to worry about the 100 foot on <laughs> Everything's yeah. Got everything's <laughs> in. All right. Anyone for the audience have anything to add for this application? Just that it sounds like a good idea. Okay. There we go. What's your name? Sorry. I'm Connie Flaherty. We're at 15 Moore Island. There you go. Thank you, Connie. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. Nice to see support. Yeah. I love support. Yeah. I heard you. Um, all right. With that, do we have a motion? Uh, move to uh, grant the application uh, of uh, Mark Brown of 10 Linda Road, Pembroke, on behalf of Susan Logan of 49 Suffolk Road in Wellesley to grant a special permit slash finding pursuant to 810 of the Situate Zoning Bylaw. Uh, and or Mass General Law Chapter 48, Section 6, to allow the extension of the pre-existing non-conforming structure um, and non or the intensification of the non-conforming lot, increasing the gross floor area by more than 20% of the property located at 17 Mordecai Lincoln Road in Situate, um, uh, to allow the addition of a second story addition on the existing dwelling uh, in accordance with a plan dated uh, January 13th of 2020 of Morse Engineering. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Follow the board's intentions and the fact that the uh, letter of authorization is on the second page of the application. Ms. Logan has authorized this ground. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Who's up? That's you? Yeah, I'll do that. Here we go. Standing out in here. Next up is the application of Michael Ahern, 190 Willard Street, Quincy, requesting special permit slash finding pursuant to Mass General Law. Chapter 48, Section 6, and or Section 810.2 of the Citroën Zoning Bylaw to increase or to allow the reconstruction of pre existing non conforming single family home on a pre existing non conforming lot, increasing the gross floor area by greater than 20%. Uh, the property at 19 6th Ave in Citroën Pass. Representing the applicant is my daughter. Owner of the property. Can give us a quick bit on what are we doing? So I, I purchased this property with the intention of rebuilding it uh, originally in the obtaining a building permit. Uh, in the jacket of the building permit, it was um, a permit to build a foundation, I think in 19, uh, sorry, 2003. To raise it out of the floodplain. So it was a solid filled concrete block foundation. So we, we took the house down to the deck and when we took the weight off the house, the foundation collapsed and had no rebound and no concrete and had no plate. So obviously we can't build on that. So I went back to Bob and, and spoke to him and said, you know, uh, I can't build on this. He came out, he looked at it, he said, no, you can't build on it. So we made the determination that I would rebuild in the same footprint. But he then said, well, if you're going to do that, can you see if you can conform with the setbacks? Because the house was askew on a lot. Sure. So we sent me a conservation. I went through the conservation process and uh, got approved for the house in a, in a garage with an impervious driveway. And after the conservation approved, he said, you know, because we're going over the 20%, we need to go to the board for relief on the 20%. And that's what brought me to the plan. Okay. So the exact.
existing dwelling to be raised on the plan has already been raised. Well, the, the dwelling, the foundation's still there. The foundation's still, still there. there. Yeah. I got you. What's left of what didn't cave in is still there. Yeah. Oh, that's better. You look out before you start building on it, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a builder, but I, I, yeah. I looked at the, the only area that we could see the foundation was the breakaway panels. Right. And that was built. So I'm assuming. Well, that's the part that people look at, yeah. right? So, <laughs> I couldn't lift the sill, but I don't know who did the work, but then there was no footings under any of the piers they put inside the foundation. They would literally eat a form over the hand. It, was not, it didn't go down four feet. So obviously there's nothing substantial to build on. I'm not going to spend any more money on it for the court. And then I agreed with him on the uh, setback issue because the house, the way it sat a lot wasn't right anyway. Yep. So we, we did move it back. And, uh, we went to the mall, did the, the length of the street, went to the mall on the street. For non-conforming addition, what Am I missing a measurement on the left side there? It's that, it's this. Is it 1.3? Yeah, it's that. The well, 1.3 was based off that, 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 that crazy stairway. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's this one. Yeah, yeah. that's the one yeah. 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 well, door. Proposed, proposed brings everything into consideration in yeah. the conformity. The 16 is uh, too close to the street, but it's the average setback. Right. According to your 100% dimension. Yeah, the, 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 the zoning guideline says you have to meet the model of the street, so we yep. get that. And the garage uh, accessory um, building has to be 20, 20, two guy garage has to be 20 feet off the right side back and eight guy on the side lot. Yeah. So it's completely conforming with the exception of the lot. There you go. Yeah, the lot's just too small. Yeah. Any questions down here? No. Okay. Anyone from the audience? No. <laughs> It'd be nice to see this project completed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Help me. <laughs> I should have been completed. Talk to my wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> you just made me think I'm sorry of the guy who was coming in so he could build an in law apartment, and I asked him if he wanted us to deny it. And he goes, They're sitting right there. <laughs> I was like, Oh, sorry. Uh, all right, with that, do we have a motion? Make a motion on the application of Michael Ahern of 190 Willow Street, Quincy, Mass, for his request for a special permit finding pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 6, and 810.2, the Situation Zoning Bylaw, for the raise and reconstruct of the property located at 196th Ave, as depicted on the plan, prepared by Webby Engineering. It's September 5th, 2019, and as revised all the way up until January 13th, 2020, that the proposed raise and reconstruct doesn't create or intensify any uh, nonconformities. To the extent it does, it would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for a very entertaining evening. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, 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 please. I'm glad you know that I had that guy's <laughs> It's I just, uh, <laughs> well, you never know, what, you never know what's going to happen at the ZBA. <laughs> right. All right. Who's going to do that? Uh, George, have you done that yet? No. All right. Has anybody given you any template? No. <laughs> okay. At the end of the meeting, you'll give me your email and I'll sign up you up. Yeah, yeah. I'll vouch for him. All right, super. Who's doing more to tell me? That's All right. Next up is the application of Christine Stark, 27 Edith Holmes Drive in Situate. Um, Ms. Stark is uh, requesting a special permit slash finding. Uh, pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 48, Section 6, and Section 810.2, the Citrus Own Bylaw, to permit the extension of the pre existing non conforming structure, increasing the gross floor area by greater than 20%, the property located at 27 Edith Holmes Drive in Citrus, representing the applicant this evening is Christine Stark. Is Christine Stark. Good evening. 
How many uh, structures do you have on the property? <laughs> All right. We've been nice ones so far, Steph. Yeah, we <laughs> What's going on? Uh, Bill in the house. <laughs> All right, so it became non conforming with the uh, 12 foot setback, and maybe I even believe maybe the front. But in any case, basically that front, front step going up to um, in the front, yeah, the front step exceeds the drive just a, a little bit, if you can tell. If you get the front there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So 26.4? We, we had to get that together in about 10 minutes last month to get it in. The garage is at 26.4. The step will be 26.6, but it still doesn't conform to the 30. Um, also, we... Um, are building a second level um, on the existing footprint, but the garage cannot, um, or the second floor above the garage, um, that was an addition um, previously, and the um, foundation cannot support a second floor. So we dug underneath, and there's no footing, so we have to take off the whole garage and re- It wasn't actually a extension or anything, it was the main house, the ground, but mm -hmm. yeah, we wanted to build on it and I checked it out and there was no footing, so I wanted to take it out and do it right. Yeah. So everything's so staying in the same Everything's staying in the same spot except the, the except front steps the front are step. But the, the, the front steps the aren't, cur aren't covered, right? right? They're not covered. No. You're okay? Yeah, You're so good. so yeah. that's not in, and it's not, you're not subject to, to the setback mm -hmm. as they're not it's covered. Mm -hmm. Well, I think no, that that's closer. This thing. Is this what it's talking? actually further away from the street than the actual garage. Right. So it's, it's, front, it's actually it's the only thing that extends out beyond the footprint, so to speak. Oh, so it's extends beyond the footprint of the garage. It's not close to the street because of the way the street is angled. Yeah. Yes. And, so but it's not even you don't even need the setback measurement because the setback measurement is to covered structure or we use the term drip edge. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so you're not I think it will have a small. It will be a covered porch, but it won't go beyond the steps. But, so you're, but the steps that currently are there extend slightly beyond your proposed little covered porch. Is it going to extend the same distance, about a foot or so beyond the edge of the garage? No, just the step itself. Oh, the step doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah right. It'll covered porch is all Just steps up to the yeah, yeah, just, just, just the, the, so you get in the door. And it's and it's not none of it's as close to the corner of the garage right. that's already there. Right. So here. So you're not creating any new non-conformities? No, it's no, just, just conforming. <laughs> yeah. More than 20%. Okay. Yeah. So something we're not doing. We're just conforming the rules and regulations, I guess. Yep. Yeah. I'm cutting right. my teeth on the new rules right now, so... Well, you had a good, a good introduction to that. I, yeah, just, you know, kind of... Uh, just looking Not that I want the grandkids to move out of the house right now, but you know. <laughs> I'm just looking the um, the app, at least my package doesn't have a uh, Google ownership. I asked and Bob said that that was good enough. No, is it, is it one? What's that? The no. Declaration of Homestead. Declaration oh, of Homestead. I don't, Where should I don't have it here. I'm oh, sorry. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's sorry. okay. You have it in the file. Yes. No, just quick. When we write the decision, the decisions typically say that the property is owned by under this situation. So we're just okay. looking for that evidence. I don't want to have to be writing it. You can say that. No, the Homestead deck has a deed reference in it. Right. It's yes. got so a deed reference in it. So the assessor's card has got the deed reference. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, no one from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm checking to make sure there's no one <clears throat> And the assessor's card says it's current owners, Shields, Claire T, yes. S, Kara, Ian Pitter, and uh, Claire's and Chris Stark. Correct. And Christine Stark. Christine Stark. There you go. And then Claire Shields. No, that she was previous owner. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. sold Prior it. Yeah. yeah. See the, the dates to the right hand side and data set. That'll be updated probably July after July. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Claire Shields. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. 
Yeah. 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 Right. It's a home machine. Right. So we can um, the card and yeah. the original home stuff. Okay. With that, do we have a motion? Make a motion on the application of Christine Stark to 27 Edith Holmes Drive, City of Mass, and her request for a special permit filing pursuant to 810.2, the Situate Zoning Bylaw, and 48 Section 6 of Massachusetts General Laws. For the addition to the property located at 27 Edith Holmes Drive, as shown on the plan prepared by Moran Survey Incorporated. Dated January 11, 2020, the proposed addition doesn't create any new nonconformities or intense by any nonconformities. And to the extent that it does, it's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Second. Right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the interesting meeting. There you go. Thanks for your patience. Trying to entertain you. I'll do that one too. Thank you. Well, I like the, the lightheartedness. I know you guys have a long day as well as everybody else, you know. Oh, we even get out. Before I forget, do we have any minutes to approve? No minutes to approve. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 A